Hello, Dr. Elmer, Advanced Neurospinal Solutions, and today we're discussing cerebellar degeneration, just in brief, with a, kind of like more like a primer. The cerebellum, like I've said before, is 10% of the brain, but half the neurons, and everything that happens, happens because the cerebellum made it happen. The cerebellum is what I call the, the chief operating officer, the COO of the brain. Whereas the, the cortex, the cerebral cortex, and here, here we have a brain, the, the cortex here is like the CEO, whereas the cerebellum is the, the chief operating officer. It makes things happen. And some of the things that we see with cerebellar problems is lack of stabilities, and lack of ability to measure things, lack of smoothness of actions. These kind of things happen because the cerebellum is responsible for creating that. It also is very interesting that the cerebellum itself is making things happen that the, cere that the cortex told it to do, but it's also monitoring it in real time. So we, we call that the feedback loop. The, the brain sends, sends a, tells, tells the cerebellum what it wants to do. The cerebellum sends it five different patterns, I'll just give you an example, five different patterns of what to do and, is, and says, pick one, we already know how to do it really well, send it back. So it picks one, sends it back. We call that efferent copy. That efferent copy comes back, it's the pattern which the cerebellum is going to use. Then it engages the system and monitors as, as information comes back on what, what is being done and how it's being done. And I call that the little sister. It's comparing, comparing the, the efferent copy to what's really going on. Kind of like, I'm do you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong. And then it's tweaking it so that it gets more and more and more refined so it gets closer to what, what we want, what the, cere what the cerebral cortex wanted. And so, it's also giving blood flow in real time. It's, it's monitoring, making sure that we have the, the blood flow to the area and also any recovery that needs to happen afterwards. But that's the sympathetic versus the parasympathetic nervous system. So that's all, all of those many, many things that are going on. So with the cerebellar tremor, we're gonna to start to notice an unstabling. A, and we call it ataxia. And the ataxia is, uh, is a un, uncoordinated, unsettled activity or movement. And we see it in everything. We see it in, in, the, in the walking, in talking, also in thoughts. They can get real choppy. The, the, the thoughts can be really choppy instead of flowing naturally. And so in, in the cerebellar, ataxia is we're going to tend to see somebody who becomes less stable because they can't control the systems and so their their stance is going to get wider you'll notice that they're that they're really having a wide a wide gait uh, they're walking with wide steps you'll notice that they're reaching out you'll notice they're looking because they're depending more upon their visual system their visual tactile system to determine how, where to put those steps down and that, and if you were to have them close their eyes, they're going over because that, that cerebellum's not doing the job they need. So, the, but the cerebellum, you'll also notice that they're getting a little bit of a tremor. Now that tremor is going to be an active tremor versus a passive tremor like with Parkinson's. When Parkinson's is at rest, they're tremoring. When they start to move, it goes away. Whereas with cerebellum, they're they're not tremoring that that like that at rest. But when they start to move, it starts to get choppy because any kind of movement, you're going to start to see that activity uh, break down. It's not going to be as smooth as possible. And you're going to notice what we call termination tremors. Whereas you get closer and closer to the target. It gets worse. So in the in the cerebellar tremors, 
we're, we're looking for a problem with that. We're also looking for a targeting issue. I don't, I, I, I finger to nose, like let's say you put your finger up and I'm touching your finger and going back to my nose and I'll be missing, I'll be overshooting, I'll be over undershooting. We might even talk a little bit about that and what that means. But all of those things are cerebellar, but it can have the same kinds of issues in terms of protein folding and, and, and the cellular problems within, which is the disease process. But then we can also, because we're not using as much or we haven't been using it as much for whatever reason, we can have an overlaying brain degeneration that is not the disease. And so here again, we have to look at oxygen, glucose, and activation. And that literally dictates how we do what we do. We also incorporate you know, lifestyle and, and any medications because very often these things progress to the point by the time you, they usually get to me, they're, they're already, we, we gotta have the medication because it's already, so much has already died. So there's so much tissue destruction. We need the medication as part of the, part of the answer to it. And that's why we have an integrated approach here. So that's, that's a little bit about cerebral degeneration. Uh, next, we're gonna talk about stem cells, which is very, a very interesting uh, concept. So uh, this is Dr. Elmer, Advanced Neural Spinal Solutions, and we're here when you're ready to take your life back. Thank you.